What's up, everybody? Michael Anthony here with Underinspired, bringing you some more Metal Gear Solid School, some MGS. I'm sitting here again with my good friend Ryan. All right, this is episode number three. Yes, this is episode number three, and fittingly, we're playing Metal Gear Solid three. We're kind of hopping around between the games, yes. learning the lore as we go, or, or rather, I'm trying to. Okay. Yes, you are. So, so what's the first question? What? what? Why is this guy shoot? Who are you fighting? Why are they shooting lightning at you? Okay, I'm fighting. Yevgeny Borisovich Volgan, okay? He is a GRU colonel. A what? A GRU. GRU, G-R-U in the Soviet army. Okay. Okay. What the hell? Okay, he, he can shoot lightning. Why can he shoot? You see, he's talking to Ocelot. Revolver Ocelot, the character we've been talking about these last two videos, okay. is above us watching us fight right now, but he's a young boy because this is taking place in the 60s. Okay. okay. He, so both of them are members of GRU, which is a, a section of the Soviet military. Okay. That section of the Soviet military is at odds with another section of the Soviet military that you may know called the KGB. Okay. Okay. And right now, the KGB is he like talking to him in his head? I don't understand. No, R Ocelot is. You'll see right here in this in this cutscene. There's a bunch of cutscenes that I cut through a lot of them because there's so much stuff that's going on. Okay. Wait, who are you playing as? I'm playing as Big Boss, a young Big Boss. So this is the progenitor of everything. Exactly. That's Revolver Ocelot as a young kid. He's 19 years old at at, the, at this point in the series. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's both of them are grew. They're at odds with the KGB because right now, uh, if I if my if my history serves me well, is he David Bowie? No. <laughs> he kind of looks like a. He does. Bit. Um. And my if my history serves me if my history serves me right, the man leading the Soviet Union right now is Nikita Khrushchev. Okay, okay. and Nikita Khrushchev, there's some there's some dissent between them. They they do not like each other, but they are allies. Between so, who and who? These two, these two characters looking at each other right now. Okay. But right now, so Nikita Khrushchev is leading the Soviet Union in real life at this point in time. Okay, okay. and he's being backed up by the KGB. And the GRU is making a, uh, making a push to install someone else as the premier of the Soviet Union. Okay. And I forget who it is, but it's the, you know, the guy that they're trying to make the premier of the Soviet Union. Yes. Okay. Fight like a man, so why can Volgan shoot lightning? Because oh. video games. There's absolutely no explanation as to why he can shoot electricity. Is he human? Why is yes. his face all torn up? From, from burns from his lightning. Oh, okay. He has been. That's why he wears a rubber suit. The suit he's wearing is rubber. Okay. So you see, explosives have been detected. I'm the one who planted those explosives. You looked kind of surprised, though. I didn't think that we would be found so quickly. So right now, uh, there's this little cutscene. You see a little RB button mm -hmm. in in the game. I'm gonna press it. In a, there you go. I'm pressing it right now. So that's why I'm seeing him. I'm seeing what Snake sees when the little RB button pops up. Like, you okay. can switch cutscene camera angles. But that's not the point. So right now, uh, the descent has been sowed, and Ocelot called him Vulgan, not Colonel Vulgan. He just called him Vulgan, said, fight like a man. So they aren't gone footing anymore. He's done with Vulgan. So right now, the fight continues between me so, and Colonel Vulgan. So Ocelot should have helped him, but didn't. Correct. Why not? Because Ocelot is working with the boss. Who's the boss? The boss is... The big boss is mentor. Okay. <laughs> the mentor of the big boss is just the boss. The boss. He gets the title of big boss. So right now I'm digging bullets out of me in, in the cure menu. Wow. Yes. The reason he's called big boss is because they needed a title for the man who killed the boss. So they called him the big boss. They were like, oh boy, I, we need a new title. We need a new name. Wait, so you end up killing your mentor? Yes, my mentor. It's weird. His his relationship with, with the boss is more than... It's it's weird. Like, the way they describe it, it's almost like this, like... Like, they were... He, you know, they were... He mentor and protege, lover and... And, and mother, and just, like, this, they have, like, the weirdest relationship. Like, it's the most personal, like, they describe it as, like, the most personal relationship a man and a woman can have. Wait, so the boss is a woman? Yes, the boss is a, she's the mother of the special forces. That's what they call her. She's the, she's a legendary soldier feared in the United States and in the Soviet Union. Okay. There was no, there was no soldier better than her, and arguably, 
in this game, you find out that even though he fights and beats the boss, she took a dive and let herself be killed. Why? Because she was aware... Watch what I'm doing here. What just happened? I... You guys can't see at home. I air quotes died. Okay, old school spy stuff. Okay, some real because you know it's, it takes place in the sixties. See, so he's walking. He's walking forward to me. I'm playing. I'm playing the ruse. I have a revive pill underneath my tooth. Oh wow, very old school spy. Very old school spy. So you see, he's like he's dead already, and whoop, not dead. I'm gonna give him one to the back of the head. Bam. Okay. So, you find out that she takes a dive. She takes a dive on the fight that you guys have. So, arguably, the best soldier who ever was was just the boss, not Big Boss. And was never truly surpassed. Exactly. And the reason she takes a dive is because her whole plan... Oh, her whole plan, the whole reason she defected to the Soviet Union side was because they wanted to have a mole inside the Soviet side and have Nikita Khrushchev outed. But when she defected to over to the Soviet side, she brought over... This, this is a real thing, everybody. You can look this up. She brought over two Davy Crockett nuclear missiles, which are nuclear missiles the size of a mini-fridge, okay, that a man can fire with a specially designed portable cannon. So a man could fire a nuclear missile from anywhere. Just one man. Wow. Okay. And she wasn't. Ex they brought it over as a, as a tiding, okay? Unknowingly, she, they had no idea this was going to happen. Volgan took one of those nuclear missiles, the man we are looking at right now, he okay. took one of those nuclear missiles, and, like I said, how KGB and Gru are at odds with each other, used that nuclear missile to blow up a KGB research facility. But they're going to think it was the Americans. Exactly. Wow. So they think it's the Americans, and... Uh, Nikita Khrushchev calls Lyndon B. Johnson directly and the two of them hash this out and he says that wasn't us that was one of our people who defected is that her? no this is Eva who's Eva? Eva was my contact I had to well my contact in the Soviet Union was a man named Adam and Adam never showed up so Eva was sent in his place Okay, why did Adam never show up? I will explain that to you in just a, a, in mere moments oh god okay we're going quickly yes so, I'm reeling so now that they've blown up the KGB research facility, the United States is on the hook for that. So they drastically revise the mission objective. And to prove the United States is innocence, they know the boss is going to have to be killed. And she knows she's going to have to be killed. So they revise the plan to have her continue her ruse and have her, her protege handle the rest of her mission. <clears throat> knowing full well that her protege's objective is going to involve killing her. Wow. So she willingly plays along with the ruse to be killed by him to free the United States of all wrongdoing. But I don't understand how him killing her frees the United States of wrongdoing. Because you got to keep in mind, this is all shadow warfare. The, the press never finds out about this. Okay? okay. As proof that the U.S. is innocent, that they're going to kill the mother of their special forces. They're going to kill the greatest soldier that they have to prove. You know, they're going to kill their secret weapon. But why? Under the pretense that she perpetrated it? Exactly. Oh, okay. It, it, they're blaming her for it. Okay. And, and are they talking about Boss now? Yes, they're talking about her right now. I've come to realize that there's a special See, there's a special relationship between you two. It's weird. Something Nobody can understand. Not just her, so you don't even... See? Something that goes beyond a man and a woman. She has a thing for... She has a thing for Snake. But she's a, he's aware that... Snake is not that kind of guy. He's not ready for it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, now you ask me... What What did you just ask me that we... Okay, why did why did Eva show up? Okay? Instead of this Adam guy. In, instead of this Adam guy. Okay? This Adam guy is actually Revolver Ocelot. Okay? So, so Revolver Ocelot is a spy? Oh, get ready for it. Get ready for it. Okay? Because Revolver Ocelot's real Russian name is Adamska. Okay. Okay. So he was supposed to be sent as my contact. Revolver Ocelot is actually a member of the KGB, undercover in the GRU. Because remember, they're warring against each other. Okay. He's actually undercover KGB in GRU. Right now, I'm going into my backpack right now to put away some guns and to pull out a, um, an RPG. So is the KGB working with the United States? No. 
Because Solid Snake is part of the United States, right? He, he, yes, okay. he is. He's a member of the. C- he's working for the CIA in this. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so, uh, Revolver Ocelot's supposed to be my contact. Okay. Uh, he decides, as a member of the KGB, that he's not going to let it happen. He's going to see how this whole thing plays out. Okay. You find out at the end of the game. That the reason he didn't show up is because he was under direct what is order. That? that is the Metal Gear in this game, the Shagohod. Wow. Okay. So in this game, the the idea of a Metal Gear Solid be, came from Alexander Lennon, I believe his name was. Okay. He was the one who came up with the idea for a Metal Gear. Okay. And the reason he came up with an idea for Metal Gear is because the Soviets wanted to be able to nuke the United States. That's what a Metal Gear is, right? It's a, it's a mobile... It's a mobile nuke platform. It's a mobile nuke platform. But before Metal Gear was ever made, That's Lennon... That's a scary thing. Yes. Before Le- before a Metal Gear was ever made, remember how I said Alexander was trying to you know build a nuclear thing for the, for the Soviets, okay? Mm-hmm. He was actually in contention against another Soviet scientist, Sokolov. And this Shagohod was Sokolov's idea. And Sokolov won the funding, and Lenin did not. So it's a knockoff Metal Gear? No, this was, like, the. this is what they thought would be a better choice than the Metal Gear. Because metal a Metal Gear at this point was just a blueprint. It was not a thing. Okay. Okay. Because oh, oh, this is in the past. Exactly. So, like I'm saying, back to, back to this Revolver Ocelot business. Revolver Ocelot is actually a spy reporting directly to the director of the CIA... So he's not really with the KGB. He is a triple agent. He is a triple agent. He is a triple agent. Oh my god. <laughs> so we are. So he's in the GRU. Working. But he's working for the KGB. And at the but same time. He really is a spy for the CIA. Correct. How? How did they ever enlist him? <laughs> no one knows. There are, times, there are times when you find out that he's like triple agents and double agents, and you're like, that doesn't surprise me. He is the king. He is the king of covert, like, double crossery. Okay? So. I just don't get how they got into contact with him to enlist him. Exact. No one does. It's, it's, it's honestly ridiculous. Okay? So, is he a good guy? Yes. He's actually, he actually, after the, after this game, he actually becomes really good friends with Big Boss. And they actually are, like, biffs. So the Shagahod... Just massive. All these guys you're seeing right now are Gru soldiers, not KGB. But the what do you call it? Gruhod? Gru. Oh no, this this the Bru. What is it called? Shagohod. Shagohod. Yes. Is a weapon of the Gru. Yes, it is a Gru was it, weapon. Wasn't it just killing Gru soldiers though? Yeah, Volgan is piloting it. So Volgan's on this little this little angry heater right now. So he's like rampaging. Exactly. He does not care who it is. Now you'll see that shotgun. Oh. But why didn't he hit him? He's got to keep... But exactly, why did he kill them? Like, like, was it really that hard of a shot? No. I'm about to blow your mind again. Okay? So we know Revolver Ocelot is a member of the CIA. Okay. Okay, and we know he's this triple agent. Okay? Eva shows up in, Adam, Eva shows up in Adam's place. And Eva says, I'm, I've been sent by the CIA. Adam can't show up. Okay? Is she really, like, working for the KGB? She's working for the Chinese. What? What do the Chinese come in this? Why? What? What do the Chinese have to do with anything? Okay, so the whole, the crux of this game is all of the super pl- all the superpowers of, of the time, the Soviet Union and the United States and the former people, People's Republic of China before Mao Zedong took over and made it communist, okay? Mm-hmm. They're all fighting over the philosopher's legacy. The what? The Philosopher's Legacy is a series of bank accounts created by the biggest business, uh, you know, business uh, men in the United States, the Soviet Union, and China following World War, uh, World War II. Okay, it's a collection of money. Okay, totaling at this point, and you have to think of time. You, so count for account for inflation. Okay. Account for inflation. This is the '60s. Okay. The amount of money in the philosopher's legacy is somewhere around three trillion dollars. That's a disgusting amount of money. Exactly. That's like thirty trillion today, or something. exactly. So the United States, the Soviet Union, and China are all vying for information about who has the legacy. 
Yevgeny Borisovich Volgin, Colonel Volgin, the man f piloting the Shagohod, his father was the final curator of the Philosopher's re Legacy, of the secret society that knew of the Philosopher's Legacy. Okay? Okay. That secret society was the Wiseman's Council. Okay? And the Wiseman's Council actually gets talked about in Metal Gear Solid 2. When they discover who the Patriots are, they're like, oh, it's these 12 men, the Wiseman's Council. It's not. Okay? That's just a, it's a red herring. Okay. Okay. So that so he has information about the philosopher's legacy. So even though the philosopher's legacy is a bunch of money, what they refer to in this game as the philosopher's legacy is actually a series of microfilms that have the information that would give you the money. So like, is it is it just is it electronic or is there like it's it's old fashioned microfilm? You know the little but tiny I mean, squares that you need to look under a mic. It's yeah. Like a sheet of paper. But you where's the under. actual money? In, in uh, shell accounts and in dummy corporations and bank accounts and banks all over the world. Spread hidden everywhere. So it's electronic money. Right? Ki yes, kind of. Okay. Okay, so we are a a a attempting to escape the military base right now. Right. Still attempting. So, like I said, so Eve is working for the Chinese. The Chinese is also vying for the legacy right now. And this thing, look how big this thing is. And what you're seeing right now is this tank with the corkscrew treads, okay, and the large thing on the, you know, the large tail end, and if you look on the side, he's got, he's got rockets on the sides of the, that thing, and where Metal Gear was supposed to be just a nuclear platform that could shoot anywhere, okay, this Shagohod instead needs three miles of flat land anywhere on the planet, and the, the tank itself acts as the first stage of a missile, Okay. By driving as fast as it can and then turning on the rockets and then firing the missile from this already accelerated state. Okay. So it's like it's like having a three stage missile in a two stage missile. You get all that extra range without any of the weight, without any of the fuel consumption. Okay. So that's the big thing. That's the big But it needs a running start. Yes, it needs a running start. It needs three miles of running start is what it needs. Whereas a metal gear should just be able to fire from a sitting position. Cor correct. But a Metal Gear is... It's, 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 it's a little outlandish, so the Soviets didn't want to take the time to do it. Right. The idea of building a bipedal tank wasn't too much for the Soviets. Right. This is also in the 60s. Correct. That's why I'm calling them the Soviets. I gotta keep reminding myself, this is, what, 1967? No, 1964. I apologize. Wow. 1964. So, the, high, the Cold War is in full effect. Right. You know what I mean? Where is it now? Uh, it's always, okay, it's all the way back It's there. all the way back So there. it's not super fast. It's not super fast, but I, it can get fast. It's just in the back. Okay? He he will speed up. I don't get why he was indiscriminately killing his own men, though. Because he just doesn't even care. All right, quick thing. You'll notice the gun I have right here is this weird, like, M16 without a stock. And, mm -hmm. it's, like a, um, and it's got infinite ammo and all that. That's because I've beaten the game. That's the gun that the boss uses that you unlock once you beat the game. It's called The Patriot, okay? Okay. It's an M16, okay? So think of what an M16 looks like, okay? With the, you know, the big bucket clip, the two big round drum bucket clip, okay? Yeah. With the barrel cut off and with the stock cut off, and she uses it like a pistol. Oh, my God. She's that good. He just steamrolled through a plane. Oh, okay. You know, forget the plane, I guess. That's, that's what I'm saying, right? There's Ocelot. He is not. He is not going to be left alone on this. Again, this is a bunch of cutscenes because this is toward the end. No, it's okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. You are okay. So here we go. Here we go. You'll know. You notice the shaggo odds. It's catching up. It's catching up, and you enough to the point that its life bar is now in. Is now in uh, on screen. Okay, that, of course that's why you have RPGs. You know? Right. You see, he's got the he's got the rockets firing right now. The missiles firing. I'm surprised you can even damage that thing. He, he, watch watch my shots. Doing no damage. Didn't feel a thing. Is What's what the point yelled. of the corkscrew tread? Uh, it's the idea. It's just a, a unique tread design that worked. That at this size, you couldn't have a regular metal tread. Yeah. So the idea. This provides the same traction of a. Of a tread, but it's able to withstand the hu the massive load. Right. Okay. So you're 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 shooting the rockets and you're shooting the tread, 
Yes. And that's like immobilizes it to some extent. Just slowing it down enough that we can keep our distance. Oh See, shit, he's he getting real close. Me. Yep. Wow. Missiles coming up in the air. Is he shooting those? Yep. Oh, I'm shooting I'm trying to shoot him down. So wait, what's the, what's not happening? You escaped or well, yes, we've made it now to the Grozny Grad Rail Bridge. Okay. okay. Grozny Grad was the name of the research facility. We are booking right now. We are trying to get away. We have a plan. But Wow. Yes. He is right there. Woo! You doing that with your body weight? Yeah. She would have flipped. So I duck on down. And of course he's gonna drift it. <laughs> So, we have a plan, and the plan is we're going to take him to the rail bridge, which we have rigged with C4s. Okay. And the idea is, as soon as he's on that bridge, we're going to pop those... Oh, I'm sorry, not C4. C3. This is the past. Oh, okay. So, we've rigged the bridge with C3, and once he's there, we're going to pop him, and we're going to take him down. Okay. Sound good? It does sound good. Okay. I, I can't help but feel like something is going to go awry, though. Okay. So... So, we're getting there. We're at the bridge. So what, what is on your mind right now? I've told you about the Soviets and the KGB and the GRU and the Chinese and then mm -hmm. and all all this stuff. All this stuff is happening. Okay. Are you are you fuzzy on anything? Like expecting something to happen? No. Or? Like like, are you following me? I'm following. Do you, you need yeah. anything elaborated? I I I think I'm following as much as I can. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're coming up on the bridge, and they have some great cutscenes in this. Mm. And I wanted to save this just because it shows it shows how we get into position. And of course, there's Snake, foot up already, ready to go. Just ready. Just boss. They have like a detonator, or oh, you, he's gonna physically shoot I'm the going explosives. To physically shoot these explosives. Oh wow! Okay, so we're in, we're in a cutscene now. Yes. Wait, did we just go from a cutscene to a cutscene? No, no, we just came out of a cutscene. Yes, there okay. it is. I just planted two C three C's all the way over there. She's telling me where to look. You see the two little red dots. Him. Now, I made a mistake here, but I was able to do it. So you have to get rid of one immediately so you can get the second one ready. Unfortunately, I blew up the one on the right, and by doing that, you create a little thing that gets in the way of that. Oh, no. Wow, but nice I shot. timed that just right. Well, that was a hell of a shot. Um, thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, 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 all right, so... The bridge is going to collapse. Yes. And Shagohat is going to fall. And there it is. That's falling. All right, so it's done. And he, he's trying. All those guys. I'm so sorry. And there's Ocelot. Now, here's, here's the thing. Ocelot, in this game, carries three guns, but he only always carries two in all the other games. Mm -hmm. And that's where he lost his third gun. He couldn't get a new gun? He didn't. He just didn't. And here, here's why. The reason in early in the game when you see him, he's using Makarovs. He's using Russian-made pistols. Yeah. And big uh, boss, you know, Snake at the time tells him, the way you twist your arm, the way you hold yourself, that's a revolver technique. Like, the way you try to absorb a shot with your elbow and with your wrist. He said, you'd probably like using a revolver. And Ocelot's like, maybe he knows what he's talking about. And so he gets a revolver, and he loves it. And that is... The, how he becomes a revolver ocelot. Oh, that's that, how he that, becomes his nickname? Yeah, and th from that point on, he always gets a revolver. Oh, shit. So, here's what happens. He dropped the bottom half. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. And look at that air. Look how fast that thing can go. Because there's none of the weight on it now. Yep. Oh, wow. I, I, I cut it because, hey, you already know it's going to go down. What happens? The fight. Let's fight it oh, out. Oh, oh, okay, you're going to fight it out. Okay, I, was, I thought you were saying you skipped the fight. But he's taking some damage from that explosion. So, flip it around. There it is. And there's the sore spot on the back of the Shagohan. Wow. And this fight actually goes on for another stage. Wow. Like, this is a three-part boss battle. No joke. But, but I cut that out because that would have been... So much more time. You right. know what I mean? Alright, so you just you just finished this stage or I just finished this stage right here. This this portion of the Shagohod battle. Okay? Okay. Coming through I'm I'm just trying to nail this thing. 
Ah. So, so what's coming up? What's going to happen in, in episode four? In episode four, okay, so here's what I am debating, okay? Uh, in episode four, would you like some more MGS2 confusion? Some more... M- and here's the thing, we can talk about all the more, any of the, the Metal Gear Solids. Okay. Okay? But what would you like to see? Would you like to see some more confusion? Because there's plenty of stuff you have not seen in MGS2. That oh, is wow. just going to dumbfound you when you see it. Then I guess we should do that. Okay. Because we gotta figure this out. I mean, I I mean, I already have in my mind what you will be seeing, and I can guarantee you, you're gonna start with a like. Come on, are you serious? Well, I mean, I just found out that this this blonde haired, blue eyed white girl is a uh, Chinese spy. <laughs> That's what. Yeah, and okay, so here's the thing. She actually has in the, in the few minutes that we have left in this video, I'm gonna tell you the reason. The reason she knows all this stuff about the about the boss. And she, you know, she had that conversation with Snake about the boss, is because she grew up uh, a member of, you know, how I told you the, the Patriots. Yeah. The Patriots are an extension of an old group called, you know, the Wiseman's Council. Okay? okay. She grew up in one of their charm schools, as they call it. Okay. She was born to be a spy. Wow. And her former teacher, mm-hmm. the boss. Wow. So of course the boss saw right through the ruse. The moment the moment Eva showed up, she was like, "I know you. You think I haven't she talked to you like you?" She had her number. I like the callback. Look at you. Is that a um? Is 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 um? Is that like that's a, that's like an old spy? Like they, they used to say that in movies, didn't they? Yeah. And you know when we'll you know when we'll talk about it more next time on Under Inspired.